Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our SafeLine webinar about 4G Volta. Um, my name is Nico, in case you didn't see me already on the last webinars. And um, I'm being joined today by, by Klaus. And let's see if I can get Klaus back here online. Uh, he is in here somewhere. There he is. Hi Klaus, how are you? I'm fine, Nico. Um, and let me reassure everybody that I am not actually a member of the Ramones. I just look like that because I haven't had a haircut since October. Yeah. <laughs> <It's a lockdown. laughs> yeah, I, I don't have that problem as a UF, um, luckily for me. But I think uh, if we can see it globally, um, we all are in a predicament. Uh, some countries are getting the vaccine better or more steady than uh, other countries, but we're still in a global pandemic, unfortunately. Um, last year was a really weird year. Um, my guess is that this year will be approximately the same. Um, but still the lift business is going strong, as we can see in our own figures and talking to customers um, here in Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, they seem all really, really busy. It's just the way that they do business is a little bit different with the face masks and uh, all the precautions taken. I don't know how it is in Denmark, Klaus. Yeah, it's more or less the same. Uh, it's full steam ahead in the lift business. Everybody very busy and luckily so are we. Yeah, that's good. But we're not here to talk about uh, COVID-19 or Corona and neither the pandemic or the beer. We're here uh, to talk about uh, 4G Volta. And uh, the reason I invited Klaus is that Klaus, uh, when it when it became a thing, Volta uh, in 2018, I guess, yeah, Klaus taught me uh, a lot about it, what it actually is and, and what, what precautions to take and, and what considerations to make, what the benefits are and stuff like that. So that's why uh, Klaus is on board today with me to talk a little bit more about this uh, new technology. Now, before we get uh, get into the technical details and, and the actual webinar, we will send you a link uh, to the recording of this webinar. So if you want to talk to customers or to colleagues about 4G Vault and you know that you've seen something or heard something from us today that uh, was actually interesting, um, you can always uh, re revisit uh, the webinar and, and the recording. Um, the Q&A is open already, so if you have a question, just submit it, but we will answer them uh, at the end of the webinar just to keep the, the webinar flowing a little bit. Um, if talking about SafeLine, uh, you can always meet the team or um, if you want us to let us know something uh, online on Facebook, we have the SafeLine group page and also, of course, on LinkedIn. Um, we also invite customers or technicians or supervisors, managers, CEOs, it doesn't matter, um, that if they have an installed SafeLine product, please share it on the social media and use the hashtag innovation by SafeLine so we can find it more easily. And uh, we're always looking forward to pictures of uh, our products uh, being installed or already installed on the elevator. Um, to introduce us a little bit more, so my name is Nico. I'm a technical commercial manager for SafeLine Europe. I have over 10 years of experience in the elevator business. Started out as a technician, uh, grew to a supervisor role and a managing role after that. And um, I believe that through these experiences, I'm, I'm well aware what's needed on the field, um, in the buildings uh, where the elevator companies are housed. Uh, so we can get uh, maximum rentability with uh, with each and every one of our customers. Klaus, let, uh, let me, yeah, let you introduce yourself. Yes, um, as I said, my name is Klaus Honner. I'm the managing director of SafeLine Denmark. Um, I've been working with Lyft telephones from 1997, both as technical support, production manager and more so low everything around it. Uh, and I joined SafeLine nine years ago uh, and have been 
overseeing our office in Denmark ever since then, and I've also particip been participating in our global marketing. All right, good. So now you know us, um, but now you know uh, what we're going to talk about a little bit. Uh, we're going to take a quick look back at the history of mobile communication, uh, though be it voice or data or this, the both. Uh, then we'll talk about why 4G is not Volta and Volta is not 4G, uh, what the big differences uh, are between them. Uh, we get a lot of um, questions about customers that saying, yeah, but I already have a 4G uh, module from another company, but it doesn't work uh, the way that it should be. Well, we're going to tell you what the difference is. Um, what's the actual benefit of having Volta already today? Because it's quite a new technology and it's not being implemented in every country yet and uh, they're really working on it. So why why should you actually switch over to Volta today? Um, then which products does Safeline have? Because we, we're not talking about the technology and not having a solution for your um, possible problems about it. So which products are equipped with this technology? Then we will bring you a little bit of latest news around Safeline and uh, affiliated uh, Lyft business. And at the end, we will answer your questions, which you can submit in the Q&A already. So let's dive right into it. Klaus, can you tell me a little bit about the history of, of mobile communication in general? Yeah, um, because we need to go down memory lane to understand exactly what 4G Volta is. Um, mobile telephone started well back in the 70s or 80s actually um, with the first generations which were little more than a radio which also meant that everybody more or less with a radio could listen in on the conversation. Um, the, the mobile telephones at the time were the size of suitcases uh, so it did and they cost a small fortune. It's not until the 1990s, around 91, when the second generation mobile network came around, which also went under the name GSM. And that was what made mobile telephony available to the normal consumer. Uh, cheap, long range, it was voice call only. Later on, they came up with the uh, text messaging and by the end, they also saw uh, the need for data connections so we could, could uh, visit websites, but it was very slow data. And that meant in around 2001, it evolved into 3G, which was four times faster on the data connection. Uh, it still had uh, a voice channel. So 3G is a separate data channel and a voice channel. Um, but the demand for data speed kept growing and we see that yet still today. And that meant that around 2009, the fourth generation uh, of mobile telephony, 4G was introduced. 4G is also known as LTE which stands for long-term evolution. It's a data channel only, meaning that when you were calling on your 4G telephone, you were actually using the voice band from either 2G or 3G to connect your, uh, your voice call. Um, but today we see that uh, we want still more bandwidth for when we are on the internet, when we are streaming uh, videos uh, or, or watching the news or whatever. And, and, and that means we need to, uh, to use some of the, uh, the other channels to, to communicate on the data. But we also need the voice call still. And there's no real need to reserve a complete channel for voice as it is actually data that is growing but we still need the voice call. And this is where, where uh, 4G Volta come in. 4G Volta is actually voice transmitted as data using the IMS 
infrastructure. IMS stands for IP Multimedia Subsystem. And that is, uh, as it says, a subsystem where you differentiate between the multimedia transferred in the internet. That being you streaming uh, a video from YouTube, watching the news on your local uh, TV channel, or play, now placing a phone call. What's actually happening in the network is that uh, the telephone providers have uh, what is called a SIP server. It's like IP telephony known in your data networks, but they're with much higher capacity that any of us can ever provide. And what they ensure is that the 4G Volta is having priority over every other communication in this IMS, the, the IP multimedia subsystem. So you at all time are sure that your voice calls get through and you have the needed bandwidth to have a conversation. Um, uh, yeah, but that uh, also means that when, when we need the more data, we need, as I said earlier on, to borrow that bandwidth from some of the other frequencies, which are today reserved for 2G and 3G. And that means that many of the phone providers are starting to switch off 2G and 3G. In most countries, it's 3G first, actually, because uh, the, the 3G telephones are more or less phased out now, whereas there's still a lot of equipment communicating on 2G. Uh, in countries like uh, Denmark, Norway, Switzerland, uh, 3G are, are being switched off this year or next year. 2G uh, will still live on in, uh, for instance, Denmark and Norway until 2025, when it eventually will be switched off as well. Uh, and in other countries, they, like Switzerland, they are already preparing to switch off 2G in, in the coming year or two as well. And that means that you will not have the old voice channels available anymore when you switch off 2G and 3G. So everybody at some point needs to go to Volta. And that is where we are in, uh, in a waiting position at the moment, we have the technology. Volta is implemented with the providers. We have it in, in our lift telephones and we have it in our smartphones, but it's not all providers that offer Volta as a part of your standard subscription. So that is something you need to be aware of today. That said, uh, our equipment can still bo use both 2G, 3G and 4G Volta. So we have fallback in case you don't have 4G Volta in your subscription. But we do recommend that you uh, start to talk with your uh, provider to make sure that you get 4G Volta in your subscription. And within a few years, it will be necessary. You will have it because there's no other option. Speaking of options, uh, Klaus, uh, what about 5G? Because here in Belgium, um, yeah, we're always five years behind everyone else in Europe uh, regarding technology. But uh, in the Netherlands, for instance, they were already talking about implementing 5G. What about that? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same all over. Uh, in Denmark, we are already implementing it as we speak. We have it in the area where I'm sitting now. Uh, but 5G again is uh, a data connection. It will still rely on Volta as the transport mean for uh, for voice calls because it, it's all handled in the backbone actually. It's only transported as data detected by the IMS that it is a voice call and connected as such. Uh, you could argue why don't we go for the 5G chips already and that is basically because they are not ready yet. The standards has not been completely decided on, 
And most of the equipment you can buy as 5G today is what is called 5G NSA, which means fifth generation non stand alone architecture. Meaning that uh, uh, the new 5G telephones depend on 4G to actually work. So there's no uh, real point in going down that lane for the next couple of years until the standard has been decided on. And we have the 5G SA, the 5G uh, standalone ar architecture. Okay, <clears throat> but we're still basically calling over Volta then, even if it's 5G. Yes, it will be uh, exactly the same. Uh, customers will never see the difference or, or the users will never see the difference because everything is handled by the applications in the equipment just connecting through 5G instead of 4G. Volta is still the same thing. Oh, okay, good. But um, talking about uh, 4G, 5G, what, what's the big difference now between uh, LTE or 4G and, and Volta? Um, I think I can take this one uh, because it's standing right in front of me. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to read. Um, actually, um, LTE or 4G, um, as Klaus already mentioned a couple of times, um, if you perform a voice call, it will actually call on the voice channel of 3G or 2G, depending on. Um, and it will take around seven seconds to connect the call, to have a, a connection made just to dial. I mean, just the dial tone alone will take seven seconds um, to hear. Whilst uh, Volta, uh, voice over long term evolution, uh, will we'll connect the users in like a second. We did some tests all around Europe in each, uh, in each office. And it was really remarkable to see how fast the connection is. And that's due to the, the data connection, actually, that you're calling over the data channel. Well, um, <clears throat> if you want to have um, a video call or a data call, meaning like a real sound quality call on uh, LTE or 4G, you will need external software and we all have them on our phone. Um, and that's WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger, uh, Skype, Teams. Uh, you name it, um, you need the external software. Whilst by Volta, it's, it's just a setting inside the phone. Like, like Klaus mentioned, it's already implemented in, in the phones, in the iPhones and the Samsungs. Huawei's name the brand, they already have the Volta capability. We're just waiting for all providers to have always Volta in each and every one of them subscriptions. So you're not bound to have an external software um, to make a video call or uh, a quality voice call. And um, LTE, well, it targets on, on the increasing data rates needed. And we're all watching little funny videos on TikTok or whatever, or Snapchat, how, uh, I don't know what the kids these days, uh, they, they use. Um, whilst on Volta, they target both internet data and voice calling without affecting each other, meaning, you don't need to go back to 3G to have a voice, uh, voice call. With Volta, you can have it on the 4G as well, so you you can only use one channel. So that's that's a good one. Uh, bigger benefits of uh, Volta. Um, well, the sound quality was also one of the things that we found out uh, by testing. That it's like I'm speaking to you now. It's it's quite quite the, the improvement in sound quality. Um, as we all know, in a lift environment, in an elevator environment, it can be an issue, the sound quality. If you're stuck in the elevator and you don't hear the operator that good, people get nervous. And if people get nervous, they're like cats uh, in the corner and they, they make funny stuff. They, they try to open the doors and, and all other unsafe uh, decisions that they can make. So if the sound quality is better, it will be more reassuring, as is the, the faster connectivity. The faster you have a connection, the, the more um, secure the passenger feels that something is going on, something is, is going to be all right. If you have to wait 10 seconds before you heard the first dial tone, yeah, it can be, uh, if you're trapped in an elevator, it can be looking like an hour. So it, the faster the connectivity for the call, the better it is to, to reassure the, the trapped passenger. It also opens some, some opportunity for the future. 
whilst we can do have data and voice simultaneously. Um, we already had some internal uh, talks about that, um, what that technology could mean for the for the future in emergency telephones globally. And we have some pretty, pretty nice ideas. Um, it will come up uh, next year or the year after. We will talk more about that, but um, it opens some some opportunities for uh, for everyone, actually, for the users, fabricators, lift service companies, for everyone. The SafeLine products we have equipped with this uh, brand new technology. Um, let's talk about the GL1 uh, first. That's our basic GSM module. So you put in a SIM card, you give it uh, 12 or 24 volts uh, power, and out comes a telephone line you can use for your auto dialer, for your emergency telephone. Um, good news for our Australian friends. Um, we are currently testing the Australian version because Klaus, we, we didn't mention it quite extensively yet, but uh, the downside of Volta is, and actually in every data channel, I guess, is um, different parts of the world have different ways of implementing this technology, the codex. Yeah, it's both that the First of all, you have you are using different frequencies in different countries, so that's one of the reasons our current chip doesn't work in Australia, but that we have a new chip that can connect to those frequencies. Mm -hmm. But also uh, for the uh, for G Volta or Volta in itself has up to five different codecs, which are the way to communicate with the data. And that varies not only from country to country, but also from provider to provider. And that can have effect on things like how to handle DTMF tones needed to make uh, the technical alarms We're using the P100 protocol, stuff like that. So, but we are working on a solution for that as well, which will no doubt be uh, a topic in a future webinar. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so that's the, the GL1 version um, coming to Australia really soon. Um, we're really hopeful that the tests will uh, will work out as they should be. Um, then we move over to the GL6. Well, the GL6 is our multifunctional GSM module with uh, backup battery uh, included, uh, also intercom. Uh, you also have an input. You have two relay outputs and so on and so on. Um, powered by 230 volts uh, AC. Those are. This is our most complete. GSM module actually. Um, and then we move over to our headliner, and that's the SL6. Uh, it was 2019, I think. We already produced more than 250,000 of SL6s. Um, now they will become SL6 4G next to the PSDN version and the 2G version. So you can choose, even with the GSM module, you can even choose um, the 2G version uh, instead of the 4G. We still have those in stock. And uh, for those who don't know the SL6, well, it's our um, actually all-in product, I call it myself, because you have every functionality you might one day need into the emergency telephone, backup battery, intercom. You can even uh, upgrade it with the right four stations to an EN8172 communication system, meaning for the firefighters. Uh, so it's the most inclusive product that we that we have also equipped with. For now, if you're already a SafeLine customer and you have a GL6 2G uh, or an SL6 2G, um, do you need to buy another product, meaning a new product with this functionality or this technology included? Well, no, actually. Um, you can upgrade your products, the SL6 or GL6, with our uh, interface board for G Volta. It's really simple. Two screws loose, pull out the 2G module, you put in the 4G module, you screw it back, tightened. Um, you perform a firmware upgrade of the GL6 or SL6, and you're good to go. You have uh, Volta capability. So this is a really uh, quick, nice, uh, again, rentability is uh, our key word here, uh, way to upgrade your, your material to 4G. And it doesn't matter if your GL6 is from 2014 or 2020. Uh, just upgrade the firmware, 
upgrade the interface board and you're ready to have uh, calls on Volta. So these are the, the products that we are working with for the Volta capability as Klaus said. Uh, and also if you've seen uh, between the lines, we're working on some other great products uh, with, with new technology, with really innovative technology. Um, because I have to remind you, this technology is there since 2018, was globally spread in 2018, at least in Europe. Uh, Americans are always a little bit quicker, but they have more problems than we do. Um, so it's it's good to see that we, we can react so quickly. And even though, like Klaus said, 4G Volta is not yet implemented with every provider, we are ready to, to have technology. Um, moving on to SafeLine news. Um, we, this is actually a news news item. Um, we present to you the logbook. We all know the logbook as something where you write down your maintenance or your breakdown information into the, the logbook of the lift. Well, we provide a logbook with all the news that SafeLine has provided uh, in the past year. So this is the first issue of the magazine that we're hosting. It's something, um, there are articles in it about the products, of course, uh, about technologies. There is a little article in it uh, from Volta already about webinars about our 25th anniversary that we had last year in 2020 um, and, and the normatives the standards and stuff like that um, we will produce uh, several occasions you can you can um, order issue one on a digital or a printed version and you can do that on our website um, if you're not sure where to find it just contact your local office or your local contact, SafeLine contact, and he will provide you with uh, everything you need. And then you can have uh, the first issue of the logbook. Now, the second issue of the logbook um, will be available on Interlift, which brings me to my next point. Um, unfortunately, on Tuesday morning, uh, we got an email from our marketing um, associate that Interlift will be postponed until April 22 instead of uh, the normal uh, date always in October on an uneven year. Well, the decision has been made in the best interest of all the visitors and the exhibitors to ensure that the trade fair can be enjoyed without too many restrictions, without too many uh, fears of, of contamination of the uh, dreadful COVID uh, pandemic. Excuse me. Um, I think my personal view, it's, it's the best way um, to postpone it a little bit um, because otherwise uh, we wouldn't enjoy uh, being around there on Interlift as we normally do. And let's hope that um, April, which is more or less exactly a year from now, um, is a fresh start not only for the business but also for us personally that we can live a little bit freer than we have today or the last year. You don't have to miss us. Uh, you don't have to miss us that long. Um, next webinar is already um, planned. Uh, the exact date has not been defined yet, but it will be held in the month of June, just before the summer holiday. Um, if you really want to, uh, yeah, have a good holiday, you should you should watch. <laughs> we will uh, we will discuss our uh, TFT displays, our uh, Leo range. Um, because my colleague Werner did a webinar about it a little bit uh, last year, but that was only for Can Open. But um, we have now some news that it's not only for Can Open anymore. Then you can uh, you can do other stuff with it, or you can connect it and, and control it with with different protocols as well. So that will be held in uh, in June. Good. Q and A time. I've seen some questions coming in already during the webinar. I will just go over them one by one. Klaus, if you can provide the uh, the most accurate answer, that would be great. I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> Magnus um, has a as a question. Many of the global elevator companies uh, often providing telephone solutions from a global supplier. Does SafeLine know if there is any standardized way to roam? Volta calls yet. So I think that Magnus is saying if if you have several um, several yeah. brands of emergency telephones, yeah. be it uh, a third party like SafeLine or uh, from the big four themselves, is there a way that you can can have Volta calls on every single one of those units? 
Uh, I think more it's uh, that the the four big ones and also others have SIM cards from one supplier, for instance, in in Europe. Um, at my and my experience so far is that they actually work better with Volta. They 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 always have Volta in it for some reason, and that could be from the uh, original providers' point of view that they are preparing for the future where everything will be running on Volta anyhow. So they are just requesting Volta and getting it from the local provider offering the roaming for them. Okay. So it, 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 the short answer is yes, it is possible to get uh, Volta on the roaming SIM card. Good. Uh, Andreas has a has a question a question for later, but I think uh, it means a question for in the future. Um, I'm smiling a little bit because, uh, as you know, SafeLine is really innovative. So the question is actually some internal household already. Um, it's a long question. I will try to summarize it as best as I can. Um, like interference is a growing problem and concern for the lift alarm uh, providers and customers. Uh, where the converted or digitalized DTMF tones are being altered. Um, will SafeLine be working on either developing a new protocol, not DTMF, I, I guess, or impl implement an existing protocol suited for LTE and data packages and stick, instead of sticking to the DTMF-based P100 protocol, which is more or less worldwide um, known? Klaus, what can yeah. we say about that? We can say yes, we will definitely. Yeah. We are working on it as we speak, where we are going away from DTMF tones and moving over to data packages. Uh, because that, that is the future of the network. We will have everything available at the same time. We didn't previously. Then you, there you had to select, now I'm sending data, now I'm having a voice call and switching back and forth. Not really suitable, but in the future, on the 4G Volta, that is something you can do. So yes, we will have a solution not based on DGMF zones, and it is in the development uh, right now as we speak. I can't give you an exact release date on it, but it's coming and it's coming soon. The next thing is, of course, that in the countries where we operate with, uh, with call centers, we need to get it implemented with them as well. So that could cause a slight delay, but it usually goes fast. Okay, good. What about DTMF transmission when using Volta? Is a question from Marco. Yeah, I, I'm assume, assuming it's uh, a little bit down uh, what we have already talked about here. Uh, DTMF signaling in, in Volta is as it is with the voice channels of 2G and 3G, very much down to the individual provider. Because in some networks, they are compressing uh, the data uh, there also. Or when you are talking 4G volts, they are not as such compressing the data with the DTMF zones. But as it's a SIP server handling everything, they are reluctant to transport DTMF tones in the voice band. They rather do it in, as a data package, and that is what's messing it up. So the short answer is it depends on the provider, if the provider allows DTMF tones in band or not. Uh, in some countries, uh, you can, like Norway, you can make uh, an agreement with your provider that for this SIM card, I need to check off that. DTMF tones is in the voice band. Others, it's one or the other. It's like that in Denmark. The largest uh, phone provider, TDC, is transporting DTMF tones as voice. Everybody else is doing it as, as data. And there we are depending on the load on the individual mast at every given time. Okay, good. What are the pros and cons when comparing Volta to VoIP? Well, you're actually asking the right person because Klaus yeah. is our <laughs> VoIP expert in SafeLine. So, 
<laughs> Go ahead, Klaus. Yeah. I'm just stretching here and then I'll start. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you could have argued that maybe we should have gone down the VoIP uh, road instead of Walter. But VoIP raises a series of other questions, which is why we haven't done it. First of all, when you're using VoIP, you need a SIP server to handle the calls. Your, uh, your voice call will still just be data but it will not get priority in the network anymore because it's not a Volta, it's just a data stream going to some server somewhere. Somebody needs to host this SIP server handling the calls. And it's not everybody who knows exactly how crucial that SIP server is. So you need to be sure for backup power on it. Uh, and you need to make sure you have uh, enough uh, processor uh, power in it, RAMs, etc. It can't just be some old computer you had in the corner just installing a SIP server on it. Uh, you can do that, but not for something crucial as emergency calls from uh, people trapped in a lift. You could then argue and say, why doesn't SafeLine then run these SIP servers on behalf of the customers? We could do that. But in SafeLine, we have always had the mission of providing our customers with a third part solution for lift telephones. And then it doesn't really work if we find people to using our SIP servers our, and pay a subscriptions to us all the time. Uh, so that, that's some of the reasons why we have chosen not to use VoIP and gone for Volta. That's not the same to say that we will never introduce VoIP. Uh, it can change in the future, but that, that is some of the thoughts from us uh, on why we haven't done that. And, and the main reason is the strip service, because when people want to yeah, host... It's, it's the, basically the because we, we want our customers to be independent. Exactly. And we also want to make sure okay. that the yes, like I said, we, we want our customers and our products to be as independent as possible. Yeah. And also we want to make sure that when our lift telephones are connecting to, uh, during an emergency call, then the entire system is working and it doesn't necessarily work on the SIP server standing in a corner in some office. But we know that the SIP servers hosted by the telephone providers Offering it through Volta will always work. Yeah. Okay. Gary Grimes, good to see you, Gary. Um, I know you're in Australia. I don't know what, what time it is there. Um, here it's in the morning, so I can guess it's pretty late for you there. Um, one for later. In Australia, we have the requirement for dual SIM application um, using different telephone company providers for redundancy reasons. Is this something that you're looking at? Now, I didn't know that it was a requirement uh, for having dual SIM applications in Australia. Klaus, are you aware? I have heard it was a request from Australia. Mm -hmm. And it, I also know that it was something that is put on uh, the PI list for development to look into. Mm -hmm. uh, and now being informed that it's a requirement I'm pretty sure it just moved up the list. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it's if it's actually a requirement, then uh, that will certainly accommodate the requirement. Um, um, if it's if it's a request, uh, me personally, I'm not talking about SafeLine now, but me personally feel that if you have a, a roaming SIM card, then you only have one subscription. Otherwise, you have two subscriptions, which makes it uh, more expensive. So that's the reason for me, at least, that I would prefer one uh, one SIM card. Uh, but if it's a requirement, sure, um, we will we will look into that and uh, and adapt if necessary. Um, an anonymous person, he probably forgot to put his name in. Um, does the norm EN8128 have any change with this new function, Volta and VoIP? Um, not that I'm aware of. Um, the only thing that changes is, is, is actually if you have to look at that, that specific way in, in the backbone, not in how the 
emergency telephone should operate. You still need your uh, three day test. You still need your uh, in the future, at least uh, the, the battery failure alarm and all other requirements regarding the indications on the LEDs and stuff like that. And Volta or VoIP uh, doesn't change anything. It just says that you have to have a uh, one hour standby time on backup power plus 15 minutes in, in communication mode. So at least one hour and 15. Uh, if you look at that, uh, really, really simple. Um, that's still the same. And then coming back to what Klaus said about VoIP, then you need to back up um, your SIP server and who's going to check up on that, who's going to control that, who's making sure that if the backup power does is not sufficient anymore, the capacity has uh, decreased between uh, 20 and 30 percent, for example, um, who's going to provide the alarm towards the emergency telephone, because that's the requirement of the EN 8128, that your emergency telephone should make the uh, battery capacity test failed alarm through to the provider or to the receiver. Um, who's going to do all that? That's why mainly we focus now on, on Volta. Anything to add, Klaus, or did I do a good job now? That was a good job. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Um, Last question for now. If you have any more questions, guys, we, we, we really appreciate it. We, we want to explain everything in full so everyone is, is up to speed about this new technology. Um, Marco, if we need to add a 4G gateway to an older dialer that uses DTMF for modernization or retrofit example, uh, is it necessary to change the dialer? No. Klaus? No, not whatsoever. Um, no. Our, our gateway simply no, uh, gives out uh, an analog telephone line and everything is handled from there. So uh, the existing uh, auto dialer can, can remain. Yeah, that's because the DTMF tones are, are being transferred to, to data actually. Um, again, we did we did extensive tests on that and, and it seemed to work work fine actually. It, it's uh, in some cases even improved the DTMF uh, communication between the P100 receiver and the emergency telephone. And I'm talking now about my tests that I did in, in, in Belgium and the Netherlands. Um, I have some customers in, in the Netherlands that just switched over as soon as they saw the tests uh, to 4G. They don't buy anything else anymore because they're believers that it's a better technology, it's, it's more stable and then the two and three G voice channels, which in some regions can be. I know that uh, Klaus, sorry to hijack it now, but I know in some regions in the Netherlands, it's 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 a better coverage of 4G than 2G and 3G. They're even shutting down in some regions um, the telephone mast for 2G for cost reasons and frequency um, bandwidth reasons uh, and just having 4G on it. So that's also a thing that you need to consider um, if you thinking about switching over to 4G Volta is when will my country or my working region uh, switch off the 2G? Not only implement Volta, but when will they switch off the older technology? That's also a key point to take away today is, is you don't have to see it as a new technology, but it's also a little bit um, obligated in some countries and some regions because there is no other solution anymore, like Switzerland. Good, uh, I don't see any more questions uh, coming up, Klaus. So I'll stop the Q&A sharing, um, make myself shown again, so I can say goodbye to all of you. And um, yeah, if you have more questions or you uh, want more information about Volta or any other SafeLine product, um, just contact your local office, uh, visit our website. All the uh, contact details are there. Um, if you have uh, concerns or even problems with the voice communication or the mobile communication anyway, please let us know. Um, we're constantly improving um, our products and our services as well. Um, so just reach out, let us know. Uh, we will come on site to help you guys uh, figure it out. Klaus, I want to thank you for your uh, for your contribution today. It was really helpful, really learn, learned a lot, actually. Anytime. Yeah, and uh, we will see you soon in June. Um, 
not on Interlift in October, as we, we mentioned, but keep an eye on our LinkedIn page for all the latest news for SafeLine. And I wish you a really good Friday. And for those of you in Australia, uh, I think a good weekend. And uh, for everyone else as well, of course. And we will see you soon. Goodbye.